Technology isn't just changing our lives, it's saving them, specifically as we look at organ recovery and transplantation. Here to show us what's new and explain why this is so impactful, Tom Neal, he's with Nebraska Organ Recovery. It's great to see you again. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to talk about this technology. It's bigger than I thought it was, but I, mean, I don't know why in my <laughs> mind I hear the word pump and I'm thinking small. Um, this is a, a, maybe the size of a cooler you'd take on game day down the Lincoln, Tom. Talk to us about this technology and why it's significant. Well, this is a kidney transporter, mm -hmm. basically. And right now when we recover a kidney for transplantation, it, it lasts for about 24 hours outside the body uh, before we can't no longer we can transport that mm -hmm. or transplant that. Excuse it's not me. viable after 24 hours. Exactly. Well, when, once we put it on the pump, first of all, it, it relaxes it. Mm -hmm. It helps it uh, rebound much, much quicker. Mm -hmm. But with this, it will now last up to 72 hours. Can you take the lid off so our yeah. viewers get a look at the, you, you said 72 hours mm -hmm. um, inside. So how does it work exactly? Well, this actually goes to the operating room. So when once the kidney's recovered, uh, these little things come out. There is a uh, ice bath here and then the kidney here you can have a kidney mm -hmm. there you go so, um, is that it actually really the gets, size of a kidney uh, this good. is a little bit small oh, okay. it's a little bit bigger than that <laughs> like I thought they were big. okay they are bigger <laughs> but it fits right in here the renal artery attaches to here and then once we start the pump up it gently pushes fluid through that and keeps it healthy keeps it healthy for it, a much it, longer it period. Uh, reduces the trauma to the kidney mm -hmm. uh, through that that recovery process and again it'll now last up to 72 hours uh, where it really helps people you've already seen you have two of these pumps yes we've got this one Sheldon and then we've got Penny you, at home Sh Sheldon and Penny yeah oh nice yeah big bang theory reference for those who like the show <laughs> here on CBS um, you've already seen where this paid off big time what happened in February, Tom? Well, basically, we had a recovery. We had matched the recipient, and we said, okay, get to the transplant center. We've got mm -hmm. your kidney. Well, they were stuck in the snowstorm. It, the blizzard happened, and so, well, we were able to put the kidney on the pump. Mm -hmm. uh, now we had 72 hours instead of that 24. Gave time for that person to get into the transplant center a couple days later wow. and get that life-saving transplant. Wow, I feel like in, you know, in this day and age, you, people say, oh, it's life-changing. Well, maybe some things aren't. We just have a tendency to exaggerate. This really is designed to save lives. That's not an exaggeration whatsoever. Not, not at all. As a matter of fact, this thing, I mean, it, it looks like a nice little pump, but it comes with a phone app, mm -hmm. so everything's got to have a phone app. Uh -huh. um, we can actually uh, understand the temperature, the flow rate of the, the fluid. Wow. Um, the doctors know exactly where we're at. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we're transporting, they know down to the minute when we're going to get to that, that operating suite. Mm -hmm. um, we can check the resistance. We can check to make sure the kidney's doing great without ever having to open it up. I am so impressed with this. Put it in context for us, the, the number of people who are currently on a waiting list that might benefit from this technology and then also if you could speak to the numbers about um, donors who might be able to impact those waiting. Oh definitely. Well first of all there's 121,000 people nationally on the waiting list mm -hmm. uh, and frankly over 100,000 of those are waiting for a kidney. Wow. So definitely a huge impact there. Uh, locally um, you know we had the most donors we've ever had last year at 78 mm -hmm. so it doesn't happen very often. 78. Period. Period. That's, you're, that's not 100,000, you're saying no, 78. No, 78 here in Nebraska, but we were able to recover 265 organs mm -hmm. to save that many people. Mm -hmm. So um, There are a, a lot of, some people have different concerns, and I know you do your best to address them, where people say, well, I would be a donor except, and a couple of those, if you would be so kind as to sort of demystify some of this, and one of them is about age. Some people think they're too old to be a donor. Is there ever a cutoff point for you at the registry? Actually, no. Um, you know, we encourage all ages to register, uh, any kind of medical issues as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, frankly, we had a 92-year-old that saved someone two mm -hmm. years ago. Um, it's all based on functionality. Mm -hmm. If your organs are working for you, they can work for someone else. So, for example, if you have heart disease, um, that doesn't disqualify you from being a donor? Well, you might not be able to donate your heart. Mm -hmm. But there again, what about a kidney? What about the lungs? You know, there are other opportunities. There's tissue donation as well. So you can still, you know, one organ donor can help up to eight. Mm -hmm. Or as a tissue donor, you could help up to 60 more 
Gosh, why wouldn't you want to do that? Why wouldn't you? Well, I, I do. I take it very seriously as part of my legacy because I think about that. Like, what are people going to say about me when I'm dead and gone? <laughs> right? <laughs> I want them to say nice things. And, and part, of, part of that for me is to be able to think about impacting another family and, and having um, just sort of giving that love forward. Even if it's you know, people you, you don't know their names, you'll never meet them, but you, you trust um, in that beautiful gift. We're looking at your website now, and I see at the, the top right part of your page there, there is a gold button. That one's a, a mm -hmm. maybe we'll send them there compared to anywhere else on your site for now. Because a lot of people will go to the DMV and they'll take advantage of that opportunity to become a donor. How can they do it through your site as well? Oh, well, just click on that button that says become a donor. It seriously takes 30 seconds mm -hmm. to register. But you truly, this is, as you mentioned, leaving a legacy and giving that gift of life. Mm -hmm after I've passed away. Yeah. What do you account to the rise last year? I know you've been talking a lot about organ donation in the state of Nebraska. Is it a matter of awareness? Or what, how do you explain the increase? Well, I think a lot of it, you know, first of all, we're talking about it much, much mm -hmm. more. Uh, we're getting out there in the media. Uh, you've been very kind to let us come on and, and talk about the benefits. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we're out and about. You know, we've, we do over 200 presentations a year. Yeah. Uh, I still have time, though, so if anyone wants to <laughs> have me come out, <laughs> uh, I'll talk to anybody about uh -huh. organ donation. Online, it's nedonation.org. They're also on Twitter, on Facebook, um, and you're welcome to call if you have any questions at all. You know, since there, there are so many myths, a lot of you might want to, okay, I want to feel comfortable with this decision. They're happy to explain it. In fact, there's a list of frequently asked questions on their website that might even address some of those for you. Tom, thank you for coming in and for showing us this technology. It really is exciting. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. In this